Dear Dave and Tom, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, I'm having trouble understanding some of the implications. For example, are Hymenaeus and Alexander believers? Are they being excommunicated or just disciplined? Is Paul's instruction to Timothy applicable for the church today? Can we deliver anyone over to Satan? If this is not the same Hymenaeus and uh, Alexander, the, the coppersmith, for example, that we read about later, I think this is uh, probably a disciplined thing because he's going to deliver them. Oh, let me read the verse. That would be that'd be helpful for our listeners. This charge, this is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, and thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwrecked, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Now, the reason I think it's discipline, Dave, is because the, uh, the other example of this in the scriptures, the, the only one that I know, is in Corinthians. Corinthians, I think, is chapter 5, uh, where you have a young man who has his father's wife, mm-hmm. basically his mother, incestuous problem. Uh, and uh, Paul says he has turned him over to Satan, uh, to for discipline, uh, his flesh, and well, but then he's restored later. It even says the destruction of the flesh, mm-hmm. that the spirit may be saved in the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's a tough one, but he, he didn't die, right. because Second Corinthians, Paul writes and says he, he's repented, and he's filled with sorrow and remorse. Mm-hmm. So, so he was probably a believer. Uh, he he had to have been a believer. Mm-hmm. But what about these guys? Yeah. Well, we have another, Hymenaeus and Philetus, that's in 2 Timothy, and um, chapter 2, verse 17, and their word, well, uh, verse 16, shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Some people like to argue, they like to have uh, discussions. For they will increase unto more in godliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Now, if this were a different Hymenaeus and a different Alexander, I think it would be very confusing. I, there's no way that you could find that out. Uh, so I would assume that these are the same characters. Now, we've added another one, Philetus. Uh, now, it says, Who concerning the truth have erred? saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So they've made shipwreck the faith, uh, and uh, they, well, I mean, they are removing uh, the hope from believers. Uh, Sorry, guys, you missed it. The resurrection passed, and... and, uh, you were born too late. I mean, you, you didn't die soon enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he calls it blasphemy. Um, that's pretty strong language. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart God hath raised him from the dead, uh, thou shalt be saved. Now, what does that do for me if I'm not going to be resurrected? And Paul argues that in 1 Corinthians 15. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. And uh, he's, in fact, arguing from Christ's resurrection that we will be resurrected. So it seems to me then that this teaching that the resurrection was passed already is undermining the very heart of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Because what is the point of Christ paying the penalty for our sins and then being resurrected for our justification, the Scripture says, if it's only going to affect certain people uh, and it's already passed. And this seems to be a, I would think, it's a very serious uh, error, overthrowing the faith of many. Now, overthrowing the faith would mean they no longer have any hope in the Mm -hmm. gospel because 
the resurrection is an integral part of the gospel. And uh, this is really denying the the purpose of the mm-hmm. resurrection and the part that we would have mm-hmm. in that. So, um, Tom, I, I don't know. Are they, Were these men ever believers? Are they going to be delivered to Satan so that they will repent? Mm-hmm. Um, would that happen in the case of that young man? Mm-hmm. But in this case, I, I just could not could not say. Well, Dave, I think this uh, this question is important given the series that we're we've begun today on the emerging church because we're going to be quoting many of these leaders and blasphemy is <laughs> that's not too harsh a word to use uh, in relation to what they are saying, what they are teaching, and talk about undermining the faith, overthrowing the faith, mm-hmm. shipwrecking the faith of some. That is a uh, chief characteristic of this movement. Uh, Tom, it sounds like you're making an application here, and it could very well be. Uh, maybe these guys are not worth arguing with. Just turn them over to Satan. Let them go their way. You, you well, except to... it's such a mixed bag. Dave. Right. There are so many people in this, right. so I'd say, well, wait a minute. This guy hasn't gone that far, and right. this individual, but some have certainly uh, really antichrist would be another uh, yeah. term I could use. You, you hate to take that approach with anyone, but Paul did in certain cases. Well, Dave, again, the, the emerging church, this is sadly, uh, we, we see this uh, racing out uh, and burning and crashing in, in the lives of many young people, many that I've talked to. It's uh, They will be so confused, Tom. They won't know what to believe, and that's the situation with these leaders. And they confess it. For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 